This is a quick little demonstration of how you can show the integration between ServiceNow and Jira using the Jira proof of concept integration uh, from the wiki. Once you have imported the update set for the proof of concept integration, you can find the integration application here in your navigation bar by just typing in integration or Jira or whatnot. As you can see here, here's the application and there's four modules currently with this proof of concept. Once you've installed the update set, you'll want to configure the integration so that it can communicate with your Jira install. Uh, these first two fields are the username and password uh, to a user that exists in the Jira instance. Um, if you're going against the demo, the official demo Jira instance, I've already created a user called SNC Test with a password of SNC Rocks. You can just reuse this if you want, or you can create a user of your own and type in that information here in these settings. Now, Jira has projects associated with it, and using the demo uh, instance, I chose to use the test project, which has a code of TST. I just got that from the Jira instance. Also, you want to know the base URL of your Jira portal or your Jira instance. Uh, in this case, this is the base URL of the demo Jira site on Jira's website. Uh, you'll also want a user uh, that will that we'll say is doing this work, the assignee of our workflow operations. Um, you'll just need to look into your Jira instance, whichever you have. Hello was a user in the public Jira instance, so I was able to type in his information there. And then this is the SOAP endpoint to the Jira instance. This is to the demo instance. But if you're going to a different Jira installation, you'll need to get the URL to the SOAP endpoint there. This allows us to communicate through web services to the Jira instance. And then for, if you're going to be implementing um, Jira to ServiceNow.com communication, you'll need to create some web services on the Jira side. Uh, they will need to have a user to authenticate as. And we specify here what user we're expecting them to use. This helps us identify what communication is coming is integration communication coming from JIRA versus uh, who's manipulating the system uh, manually. Now to test the one-way service now to JIRA uh, portion of the integration. Uh, we're going to create a new incident here. Right now we have the integration set up to take any incident and create a JIRA issue. All right, we're going to just say um, my built-in cup holder, and I'm yelling, I guess, uh, isn't working on my computer. My cup gets caught when it retracts back into the machine. Let's submit this. And now we'll go back to uh, the incident that we created and we'll take a look at it. That looks like just what we expected it to look like. There's our comment. There's our short description. But you'll notice all, now there's a new button called View Jira Record. Now if they click that, this will go into the Jira system whether you're logged in or not. And as you can see, we've created an issue. My built-in cup holder isn't working. And um, if we look at comments, we see that uh, our comment got added in there also. You need to remember that this is, this is a proof of concept integration, so the number of fields are limited that we integrate. Right now, we're integrating the short description and the additional comments, as well as our incident state. So if we were to um, add one more comment, this is one more comment. Let's just uh, save, and then we'll go to the Jira record, we'll refresh, and we'll see that our new comment has uh, saved right there. Um, another thing to make note is, uh, in order to enable a two-way integration, uh, we're sending in the random text field the sysid to the incident that this Jira issue pertains to. So if we're going to do a two-way integration back, uh, currently, uh, you can change that to whatever you want to be. Uh, you can grab that sysid field from this random text field 
uh, over here. It's important to also note that JIRA follows a workflow with its uh, issue status or its incident state in our, in our case. Uh, you can go from any of these, all of these actions here are the same state in our integration and uh, up through awaiting evidence. Um, so you can go from any of these states to resolved uh, and then from resolved to closed. From resolved or closed, you can go back to any of these five states here. Now, um, when you go back to one of these five states, it treats it as a reopen. Okay, so let's mark this as resolved. And we'll view the JIRA record. And we'll see that it marked it as resolved. Uh, let, if we mark it awaiting problem, and we refresh, we'll see that this integration treats it as a reopen. Okay, then we go back to, let's resolve it again. And refresh, and we'll get re resolve message. Okay, then we can mark it closed. And as you can see, the status is closed. Now, if you do want to do an integration that comes from Jira to uh, servicenow.com, um, we've built out uh, the inbound portion of this on the ServiceNow side. So you do just need to um, write code or, or set it up properly on the Jira side. We didn't have access to Jira backend to do that, so we couldn't just build that out. But uh, in order to be sending uh, actions or synchronization from Jira to ServiceNow.com, you click on this inbound SOAP web services module. And as you can see here, here's your WSDL uh, for getting the different functions that are possible. Uh, you just import that WSDL into your JIRA application. And then, um, <clears throat> as you can see here, uh, just to make it easy, we've created uh, three different uh, web transform maps. And let me show you kind of how to use those. I've up SOAP UI, and I've imported that WSDL uh, that was shown in, uh, in our in inbound SOAP web service. And... Um, I've imported it and received these functions here. Uh, this is a web service import set, so really all we're going to use is the insert function. Okay. Now I have, and I've posted this on the wiki, but there's a number of examples. If you want to create a new issue, meaning you've created an issue in Jira and you want to create a similar incident in ServiceNow, um, <clears throat> uh, this would be the sample uh, XML code to do that. I've, I've implemented, and it doesn't have to be used this way, but I did it just to have a certain workflow since it seems like Jira uses uh, workflows more. Um, there's, a <clears throat> there's an action for everything you do uh, called U Web Service Action. Uh, for new record, you're obviously creating a new record in the system. Uh, let's go over here to modify an issue. That's going to be... Um, Let's look at that real quick. You're, you're going to use the web service action of modify record. And actually, to change the state, here's another example. To change the state, we're going to still use that modify record web service action. So modifying the incident or changing the state, we'll both use modify record. And uh, if you're going to be adding comments, Jira does it as a separate action. So I created a separate action here in our inbound SOAP web services but it's just add comment, and then you type in your comment there. Also, also the issue number, the number that uh, Jira uses is not, it does have a database ID similar to a ServiceNow sys ID, but it actually uses its, its visual ID uh, that's displayed on the web browser. And so that's the number that you'll be passing back and forth uh, with the integration, and that's the number that we'll store to help us know what, ins, uh, what issue we're working with. This concludes the overview of the Jira Proof of Concept integration with ServiceNow.com.